that gets me excited. Dang! Yes! Let there be power! <laughs> Is it moving? Oh, it's moving. I'm gonna be working on a wood project for you. It's gonna be the whole process. I don't know how many hours and days this is gonna be, but I'm gonna walk you through the whole thing, an entire video. Number one, this is gonna be live edge wood. It's gonna be for my editing desk over here, my corner desk. It's gonna go under these new shelves that I put in. Taxidermist working on some of my fish mounts right now. It's coming together awesome here in the fish cave. And this company, FlexiSpot, they sent me these legs. They saw my last woodworking project and they were like, hey, would you be interested in uh, checking out our, our legs, put on a project? And I was already thinking about this wood desk. I was like, you know what? That would be really cool to be able to stand up or sit down while I'm editing. So we are mixing modern technology with live edge wood. FlexiSpot sent me these legs. Normally you can get these it come with a tabletop and everything. I said, don't send me that tabletop, just send me the legs. I got the tabletop covered. And it's a adjustable frame. I got an L-shaped, but you could also get like your standard long desk, rectangular desk. But I'm a big fan of the L-shaped desk, especially editing, because I got so much stuff going on. So I've already adjusted these legs to about where I think they should be for this piece of wood. But it's gonna help my feet, it's gonna help my back. I spent a lot of time sitting at a desk staring at a screen punching keys guys you have no idea i enjoy getting out in the outdoors and i almost dread editing sometimes especially when i know it's going to be a very very long edit because um sitting at a desk all day isn't good for your body it's not good for your back oh dear goodness that is good looking y'all this is what is referred to as a live edge slab. So instead of having that sharp angle edge cut, this goes all the way out to the edge of the tree where the bark is. So the bark and the outside of the tree is exposed, that live edge. This I thought was the perfect piece to go on my office desk. If you choose an oak tree or something like that, that's, that's not particularly straight, you're gonna get a, a lot of cool angles. I love it, I love live edge tables like that but for an, an editing desk that needs to go in a corner i couldn't really use that type of wood tiger wood comes from brazil and it is a, a very straight growing tree i saw these while i was in the amazon usually pretty straight but they kind of have a cedar look to them here's the edge of the wood and i'm not going to do a whole lot to, to finish this i'm going to do some sanding i'm going to do a little bit of coating but the goal is to leave this beautiful natural looking piece of wood alone kind of let it do its thing that's kind of the point of of using live edge wood for any of you go off on me cutting down trees in the rainforest this is a sustainable sustainably sourced piece of wood i'm gonna have to miter this edge and that's gonna take a, a chunk out of the wood actually the original way i wanted to miter this it was going to take way too much off this wood. And this stuff is expensive, y'all. This normally is $880, but I got it for a little over 500 bucks. They had this piece on sale. There's this website called woodslabs.com. They're not a sponsor, but I used them to source this piece of wood. I shopped around locally. I wanted to find something locally, but I couldn't find exactly what I needed. Like this shipped from Florida and it was free because my order was over $500. So anything over $500, this sounds like a plug for them, it's, but I promise you. My dad works in uh, the trucking industry. He was like, how much did that cost to ship? And I was like, nothing, it was free because it was over $500. He couldn't believe it. Normally this would be a, a lot to ship because it's over 200 pounds, it's very heavy. But I just wanted to mention that in case you're looking for some live edge, you're looking locally, can't find what you want, this is a, it's a pretty good deal. So here's the dilemma. It's very expensive. You don't want to just cut pieces off. You don't have much to work with. A true miter cut that I would have to cut 45 degree angles in this wood. If you take a 45 degree angle over here, over here, it's gonna take about four feet out of that piece of wood, which I cannot afford. So I'm going to do an altered miter cut where I just cut one 45 and I'm gonna flip the other side. But it's gonna be unique, it's gonna be cool, it's gonna look awesome, and it's gonna be on some electronic legs that allow it to go up and down. Let's get into this thing. I've got a uh, track saw that I'm gonna be using to make the 
the cut. You know what I found? You can't just go to Home Depot and get yourself a track saw. I had to order one of these things online, but what the track saw allows you to do, cut anything at a, a long length and you can keep adding tracks, as many tracks as you want. I went and got this foam from uh, Home Depot. I think it's a two inch piece of, uh, of foam there and that allows me to cut th all the way through the piece of wood. It'll cut into the foam, not into the concrete. So realistically, I've got one shot to do this right make the right cut. I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. I might have to get my dad to come over and help me move this thing. It's so heavy. Okay, I'm gonna call it right there. This is my track. This is what I'm gonna be using to run a saw down and make this not perfectly straight cut, but about as good as we can get. What's going on? LFD's here. I heard Miss B ran off. Yes, yeah. <laughs> she made me look bad. Yeah, she's like a three-year-old running through the neighborhood. Man, she got in some hog manure and just wallowed around. Hog manure, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, very good. Shout out to LFD for helping me move that. Could not have done that by myself. Take my 90-degree tool, butt it up against the track. Make sure that's 90, go down here, taking a piece of the shelf I recently cut, butt it up against that, make sure it's flush, and then, I know that's a 45, cut that on the miter saw, and then I went ahead and marked it right here, and I'll run that down this way, and then on the other side. It's gonna be very important that I do not move this track once I start cutting. So nerve-wracking. I think we did it though. The cut looks pretty clean. I think that track saw did pretty good. So hopefully it's the right angle. I'm gonna flip this piece over and see how it looks as an L. Okay, yeah, that is way different. So here's the issue that uh, I pretty much already anticipated. The challenging part here when you get to the angles of the live edge look how much more that's sticking out see and then you got different lengths going on like how is that you know that's that's not that's not right we're just gonna have to uh, put our thinking caps on here this is the move this weird looking situation there's there's not a whole lot I can do about it because of this track saw it's able to cut at different angles as you can see it laying right now I'm gonna cut this side to be more like that angle and then that'll fit in better it'll look better I might actually be able to cut it at this angle here I could take it off and then do some burning on it and make it kind of match I'm not happy with you know having to cut it the way it is and then you know the inside of the board isn't going to match up but if i did a true miter cut we're talking about basically removing four feet which is about the length of that edge right there so that would leave me nothing life is hard sometimes you got to make these tough decisions but i think i could live with that and still have a really awesome table That was a very difficult cut to make, but we made it and I think it looks pretty good. It didn't take too much off the table and it gives it that nice matching looking edge. And then I could just put it on the opposite way to match, but 
I don't think I'm gonna do that. I don't think that's the right thing to do. So now's time to call upon my buddy Lance. I need the plunger, buddy. Let's do it. So that's going to go in here, right? This piece is already going to drop down in. We're going to about to bore that next. This is going to drop in and it's going to go right in there. There, this will tighten down and it will pull the two pieces together. So we'll do the next. There's, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, four more times five, or maybe do nine more holes. When's the last time you plunged a uh, quality piece of wood? Well, I never have, but I'm watching my good buddy Lance do it right now with his Festur Domino XL. That's right. This thing makes connections. It's a connection maker. You could call it the Facebook of tools. It's, it's the Cadillac. It's the Cadillac, baby. There's basically a big old, uh, what do you call those things? A Norwal walrus face? It's a, it's a glorified router that oscillates. That gets me excited. It does a little dangle in there. And it goes side to side. It makes these perfect little oval holes. And uh, what it's goes a, in there is called a dowel. It's a dowel, a dowel jig on steroids. Uh, Lance has a whole garage full of these fest tools. They're, they're German. They're very nice tools. I have a bunch of Dewalt's because I'm just a redneck that lives in the woods, but when you move up to that school, you know what you're doing. Well, one thing about being at the treehouse, you never know what kind of bugs you're seeing, and I got a, I got an eyeball on probably one of the biggest stink bugs I've ever seen in my life. What does a stink bug look like? He is right there on that rake. Take a gander. Oh, yeah. Take a gander at that old boy there. Wow. <laughs> You know, I live in the city, but I don't even know what a stink bug is. <laughs> you live like five miles down the road. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to touch him. Do they really stink? Well, I don't I don't know why they call them stink bugs, but I know they do carry something you don't want. Like, <laughs> they do make you fart. <laughs> That's 100% true. We're going to put wood glue on these dominoes. Oh dang, that one really juiced out. Yeah, I've never tell. Big time. And these are these are these are just for support pieces. Right? They're just gonna right. go in while they, they hold the two pieces together. Monumental part of the video. I've got these pegs in. These are our connectors that go on the other side that are gonna tighten down. And I need to make sure that these go in here. So it looks like they line up. So that needs to come up a little bit. Yeah, come on. Pegs, oh yes. Oh yeah, there we go. OSG helped me migrate the legs in here. And now we have what is appearing to be a bottom of a table. I've got to get this lined up, but it's looking supreme. I do see a problem with this over here. There's a lot of real estate on this end. I don't really see that supporting all the way out here. Uh, I didn't want to cut the wood and get too hasty because if it does support it, I definitely want it, but it's looking pretty long. I basically just need to make sure that gravity doesn't destroy me and destroy my table. So let's line up some holes and let's get this thing balanced. I'm told when you're working with dense wood like cherry wood or any kind of uh, fruit woods, uh, tiger wood, this is the kind of screw that you want to use. Something with uh, more teeth, more the finer, refined, more fine teeth? I don't know, more grip basically.
Sanding, sanding, sanding. Time to make it smooth. matches the cave beautifully and I can't wait to get this over here in this corner right here and start making more videos on it. I'm gonna feel the warmth of the Amazon on that table. It's gonna inspire me to make amazing content for you guys. So that's what I'm excited about. It's beautiful. Control box. And this control box is going to connect to. I'm going to go ahead and say the word actuators. I think that's the right word. Actuators on the legs. They simply plug in with these cables right here, and we're going to use these plates to cover that up. I'm going to use all this space that I have and hide this cable. And this plate is going to go on top like that. Okay, time out. Got some new Guggen Squad shirts. Oh, here we go now. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Woo! Oh my, you see what we just did, y'all. You see what we just created? Look at this. Man, this table is just gorgeous. Just that natural look is so frothy. Very, very stable. It's even got little micro adjustments on the leg so I can get it just right. But man, I'm out of breath. Should I go ahead and do the raise up leg thing? That's, that's the cool part. It's like the ooh ah part. Should I do it now or should I wait? I think I should wait. I should wait until the entire thing is on here. I'm stoked if you can't tell. I love wood. I gotta bring in the big guns. OSG, show them the, show them the cannons. Yes, my middle school man arms. <laughs> <laughs> middle school man arms. You do that. That's the kind of arms I had when I was like 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're like... Out there foot, suiting up football. The skinny you know. arms, but I still have some muscle in there. Yeah. Very fine. Yeah, the fat doesn't go to your arms <laughs> whatsoever. She's never gonna be that old woman that's got them flab arms. Not OSG. It's supposed to be like that, yeah. No, wait, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I'll be messing that with things that you don't know about. Like Come on now. All right, now let's get that. this table and let's put it on. It's so smooth, it's like a baby's bottom. Basically, so I put a 220 grit, grit orbital sand job on this guy. Now, how are we doing over there? I'm scared to let it go. Now, I haven't tightened this up. This, this thing is huge. It is big. That side is definitely big. I mean, it looks just so phenomenal. Now, I haven't tightened it up, but oh my gosh. <laughs> There's no way if I let go that it's going to support. Well, I got a tripod supporting it right now. Connect it at the bottom and see if it's going to hold. I, I think Steph's right. I don't, I don't think there's any way. It's gonna happen. I think I'm gonna have to end up cutting it, but it does look good. It does. I can't wait to see it in action when it goes up and down. <laughs> That's the fun part. Everybody wants to see the go up and down. Yeah. I especially like the edge. It's just like little crusties, like a little Oreo crust. 
and then delicious cream in the middle. Oh, red Irish cream. You talk about wood in a more sensual way than you talk about me. <laughs> oh, you should hear me talk about fish. I really don't want to do this, but I'm telling you guys, this piece of wood, it's a hundred pounds. I was four, now I'm gonna cut it down to three. And on the back of the table, it's gonna be like five. So there's just a lot of weight there. It's breaking my heart, but just the way it has to be. So I had to do a little deconstruction, y'all. Not gonna lie, I had to I had to take her down. Key problem: I wasn't able to reach the keyhole, uh, the main keyhole that brings. I mean, that's the center one of the table because this was covering it. So I'm gonna put it together on the ground, both pieces. This is the big moment. This is the bringing of the gap. Oh man. There we go, yes. This is the one right here that really needed it. Like mine, I mean mine is, mine is solid, dude, and it's tight. Yeah, no, that's how I want it. Well, so, we're just gonna have to cut those two, uh, two inches, I bet. I bet it's two inches. We did a bare, we did a decent job, it's not as accurate as you think, obviously, right? Yeah, so cause, at, yeah, actually, because the one at the end pulls together, it's not completely tight, but it's not like the other ones. I think, and I think, well, I use that right angle. I, we use 1.5 when we really should have probably used 1. Well, 1.6. The main thing is you got to use an imperial uh, tape measure. Cool. I mean, it would have been, it would have been better if you wouldn't have cut it before you. I know. It out. Yeah, but it's two inches. I know. Right, I'll, see it, I'll just see you in the morning. Just text me when you're done cutting it. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, man. These screws have a bullet point into them, and when they go down into this divot, it's designed to pull together, but. Since we uh, did not measure absolute uh, perfection, it's actually kind of driving apart where it's hitting. And that, guys, is just no bueno. I mean, not only do I want it to fit together just totally tight and be great, but the other thing is this thing is super heavy, as you guys know. So having a gap like that is, is not gonna be good with that much weight. Another day has gone by with the table. What I have learned with wood projects um, don't think you're gonna get it done in one day uh, if you're new to it. You got everything planned out, you draw it out, and especially working with, with raw wood, live edge, uh, rough cut wood, there's always imperfections and things that you're gonna have to adjust for. I'm just not gonna accept anything else other than perfection on this table. It's just too cool. See those holes right there? That is what we gotta match up with this piece of wood over here. So my buddy Lance is coming over and he's going to help me uh, perfectly line these up again. Well, I guess we'll use this as a, uh, a reference point. You're gonna see me finish this table today. It's gonna be in this shirt. I've worn a lot of shirts and pants, different clothing during this video because it's been many days. If we're 38 on this side and we're hypothetically 38 on the other side, do we overcompensate and do 42? Oh yeah, because we're not cutting the other side. Yeah. But then, then I, I don't know. We ended up having to go back, y'all. Because when I measured the lines across this other piece of wood, at a, at a 45, it created a greater distance and did not line the holes up correctly. Some of you may not understand what I'm talking about. I don't even fully understand. I just know that physics was involved. You got a nice piece of firewood. We got a, we had a great, I could maybe make a Swiss cheese baseball bat out of that maybe. It's like about a $35 piece of firewood. What's something creative I could do with that, Lance? Hang it on your wall to realize that the projects are not easy. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we are, we are down to this. It's gonna be okay. Through much effort and more calculations, we've brought the table together, y'all. Been some boo-boos that have happened. I also drilled a pilot hole through the table. 
I'm going to saw this off and make it kind of a rounded corner. Now Lance gave me some of these tools, these very refined uh, sanding and shaping tools that have really fine teeth on them that I'm going to be able to uh, round this corner off with, really shape it in a tight spot the way I want to. The unfortunate thing is I'm sitting inside of the cave right now. And doing all this sanding and chopping is going to leave a ton of sawdust. But when I'm done, it's going to be ultra smooth. And we're going to get this thing in the corner finally today. Termination, skills, screw ups, but then recoveries. Woodwork, knowledge learned. <laughs> Basically what this tool is doing is allowing me to take off large chunks of this wood very quickly and it's it's like Velcro, it's like very very hard Velcro, absolutely perfect for this situation where I've got one side that is rising up higher than the other, it's more proud than the other side. Something's biting the crap out of me on this shirt. We're gonna change out of it. I don't know what that was all about, something was getting me. All right, we're almost to smoothness here. That's a spot one of those nails got right there. So I'm gonna take that out, take all these little marks out. And uh, it's just going to be pristine. I just went over this table with 180 grit sandpaper for about an hour. There's just of just hair roughness. I mean, just tiny little little baby hair. This crack, I mean, you run your finger across it, you can't, you can't cut your nail, it is, mm. woo, just takes a lot of work. Woodworking, guys, it's like, uh, it's like raising a baby. away all the little dirt and things. I'm using an old crappy rag. Oh, I got two. Doesn't this look beautiful, y'all? This color is going to be what it's like when I'm done. After I, I bring out all the dirt, little little things that are still in here, I'm going to then put some boiled linseed oil in there, and that is going to basically give it its final uh, color. We've given the spirits time to dry. Now it's time to add the boiled linseed oil, which I've never used. Mm. Well, I've never had so much trouble with a cap in my life. Okay, finally got it. Wow. I had to harness the inner tiger of the tiger wood. <laughs> it says you're on the can, you're supposed to let this soak in to the wood for about 12 to 18 hours. This stuff doesn't harden or anything like that. It's literally just a, it's like a wood lubricant. Oh yeah. Woo -wee. That looks good. Mm. All right, y'all, the table is fire. After that bowl of linseed oil sat overnight, absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna do two more coats on it but this is pretty much what the finished product is gonna look like. Now, we've been waiting this whole time to see not only the natural beauty of the table, 
here in the new editing corner at the fish cave. But now, I present to you some lifting action. Hold on to your butts. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Can we put some cool music into this right now? Look at this, y'all. Oh yeah, we're going up, baby. We're going up. And that right there is now a standing desk. Want to sit down? We just come over here. Don't we drop it back down, babe? We just drop it back down real easy. A beautiful mix of technology and natural wood. After all this building, it is time to get back to work and do some edits, y'all. Thanks for coming along on today's build. There's a lot of wires that are kind of messy. I think I'm gonna use some pallet wood to make a, a small box to hold a lot of the, the cables and just keep that wood look going in here. The fish cave just continues to come together. If you're interested in doing a table like this, you can get some table legs from flexispot.com. If you want to use the discount code lake 4 guy at checkout, you'll get $15 off. So shout out to them for providing the legs for this table and make sure to get dried wood. This one was kiln dried, but it came all the way from Florida, which is a moist environment. And uh, here in Texas, it's dry. So there was some cracking that's going on. Subscribe right here to the channel. Hit the ding dongs for all the notifications. If you guys want to see more videos, I got some over here. And if you want to get some merch and support the channel, go ahead and click on the latest merch item right there. Probably going to be a sweet t shirt. Oh, hey, what's up? Hey, we want to just take it down, Rush? Okay. Okay, well, yeah, that's a little high. Well, here we go.